In the second webisode of the Fubu story, Keith's parent tells of the struggles and sacrifice made by him and his three partners, Damon John, Jay Alexander, and Carl Brown. He also tells us how P. Diddy came to them for advice on starting Sean John, and how they influenced and transformed the urban market into a world fixated on their brand. heard the Bill Gates story of how he started Microsoft in his garage and how Michael Dell began Dell Computers in his dorm room. Well, how about four guys from Queens starting an international clothing company by selling homemade hats on a street corner? Meet the amazing men of FUBU. Who would have thought that four playground pals in Queens would grow up to found and run a multi-million dollar sportswear company? Is it dream come true? Carl Brown, Damon John, Keith Perrin, and Jay Alexander co-own FUBU, which stands for For Us, By Us, an apparel company that targets young consumers. But what you see today is the result of a most unusual past. Not a lot of people know about the, the struggle before we got to, you know, our deal. And I think those four years that we worked and we didn't get paid and we grinded it out for four years. For years, times were tough. They all held second jobs. None took salaries for the first four years. But the question is, how do you get from peddling homemade hats here on a street corner in Queens to having your merchandise sold in stores across the nation and around the world? Persistence is their favorite word. They say they never gave up even after nine banks refused to help. The 10th fleet said yes. Our influence on the other brands, I mean, you know, it, it was huge. It was huge. You know, these guys looked at us and said, well, you know, these guys are doing numbers. You know, how can we do numbers like that? Like, how can we achieve the same success that, you know, that they achieved. At the same time, the urban sportswear market began capturing the imagination of trend-setting youth, a phenomenon that fueled Tommy Hilfiger's $700 million empire and spawned a rash of mainstream imitators. Well, I, I know Puff, when he came up here, he sat here and he was like, you know, I'm about to come out with a line or whatever. And we advised him, he was like, you know, do you, you know, we'll support you, you know, if we need to, if we need help you need from us, you know, you got it. Boo-Boo's success grew out of its authentic beginnings. It was designed by young men who had street credibility with urban consumers and suburban teenagers who spend $13 billion a year on clothes and have adopted urban brands as an essential status symbol. Who would have thought that four playground pals in Queens would grow up to found and run a multi-million dollar sportswear company? How fast? And how far you come. But there's another player emerging out there, and while there's no particular cachet associated yet with like 350 million a year, it may just be a matter of time before you recognize his name and his clothes. So a 200 million dollar sportswear empire called Fubu, meaning for us, by us. The power line called Fubu, we are. a multi-million dollar sportswear Our company. Labels in a five billion dollar urban clothing market. They wanted in. You know, they was like, well, I'm pretty. I'm a pretty fashionable cat you know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. I, I think I have a little swagger with me where I can go out there and, and, and create my own line you know Puff came out he did his thing you know Jay came out he did his thing you know but within all of that happening we still held our ground you know what I'm saying and we still you know made that that impact and when the thing started to slow down for us on, on you know on the state side he was already planting seeds overseas, you know, international. So, you know, by the time they came out and by the time they got hot, you know, and our line started slowing down, which is natural. You know, you're going to have kids, especially kids nowadays, they're, they're very fickle. They, you know, they jump to one line to the next and who, you know, who's, um, you know, whose name is the hottest name on the street right now. So that's who they going for, you know. Um, there's no brand loyalty, you know, unless it's a... It's a high-end, say Gucci, Prada, you know, Louis, those type of things where you have the customers that, that are faithful. But now in the urban market, you know, the customers, you know, they weren't that faithful. So, you know, we just moved on and we built something overseas where it carried us to the point where we're at now. And we're still doing it. So, you know, 
a lot, a lot of the other brands, you know, a lot of them won't mention us. You know, I'm, we're not afraid to mention them. I'm gonna give them press. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna give them a little press. But, you know, I, you gotta kind of ask them, man. You got, I know they, I know they won't say it, but I'm sure we had a major influence on a lot of these brands and, and a lot of these people coming up. And, and you know, like I said, it was more about the money thing. Like these cats are doing real numbers. You know, I could do that too. And when they did that, we jumped into the music game. Made some money off of that. Yeah, uh, come on, uh, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, yo, baby, in the wild, straight up, time, time. Straight. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's how we uh, gonna whoa, whoa, do it, baby. Whoa, 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 whoa. And the only way to stay alive is to keep my mind on living. Don't let a coward know what hold it till it's time for spitting. I say these ducks all the same, from dives to pigeons. And dog, I'm over cats, wives, it's mind be driven. I'm sipping in it like it's 820, trying to go from pennies to stacks. I'm well-rounded, pushing everything from jacks to lax. I love hunting.